Well, I try to write one new one each year for uh, UK Live. So this is very short. It's barely even a story. It's sort of vignette. But uh, we'll try it. Oh, when I get my breath, okay. It's called Reflections. I had another little chat with the postman this morning. He told me that he starts at 6 o'clock every morning, and most days he's finished before 12. That's not a bad job, is it? Finishing at 12. Not always, of course, uh, because sometimes people talk to him and slow him down. I wonder if he was getting at me when he said that. No, I'm sure he wasn't. He's a nice chap. He has a wife and two sons. Takes him to the park to fly model planes. Takes him fishing on the canal. He told me so. He's a busy man. You can understand how he doesn't have much time to talk to people like me. I don't have all that much free time myself, really. I mean, I have to shave and dress, and take showers and cook my meals, and then at night get ready for bed. <laughs> I have my room to keep clean and, and the hallway, and I'm always the one who does the dishes and cleans the communal kitchen. I don't mind doing it, I'm not saying that I mind, but it is always me. <laughs> Mrs Duncan says I'm the best lodger she's ever had. Always pay my rent bang on time, keep my room clean and tidy, remember to put the lights out in the kitchen and the bathroom, never make a noise. She's full of praise for me, she is. Well, I'm older than the rest, I suppose, more mature, responsible. I've developed good habits living on my own all these years. Well, I, sit, I say on my own, in fact there's three people in this house, more than that when their girlfriends are visiting. That's not supposed to happen, of course, but I don't say anything to Mrs Duncan, because it isn't really any of my business. It can be quite interesting, listening to them. I mean, listening through the walls. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> of course I don't listen to them, not deliberately. You can't help hearing things, can you? I don't have any lady callers myself. I uh, don't have any gentleman callers either, for that matter. I just like my own company, you see. I was never a great socialiser. I don't have any, I never had brothers or sisters. I used to spend a lot of time on my own when I was a little boy. There's nothing wrong with spending time on your own. Nothing wrong with being self-sufficient. It's a sign of strength, inner strength. That's what I've got. I've got inner strength and independence. I like walking. I go for long walks at night. It's a different world at night, calm quiet, restful. There isn't all that traffic and all that stuff going on that gives you a headache. And If you do happen to meet somebody, it's a better chance that they'll exchange a few words with you, even if it's just good night. Down the canal is, is where I like to go, along the towpath. You could walk for hundreds of miles along that if you wanted to. It goes all the way up to Leeds, maybe even further, I'm not sure. It's almost deserted now. As if they'd stopped using the M1 because everybody had started travelling by helicopter. <laughs> a super highway built for another age. Just a toy now. A theme park version of what it once was. Some people live in the canal boats, of course. Loners like me, square pegs, one kind or another. Always have a story, canal people. So I would imagine. <laughs> Not that any of them has ever shared their story with me, but I have that effect on people. It's something I've noticed. People don't seem to want to have conversations with me. Even the dynamites in the park, lying under their blankets with their plastic bags and scruffy little dogs at their feet, all they want to know is whether I've got a drink for them or money for cigarettes. Sometimes I sit on one of the benches by the swings and a little toddler will walk up to me. Then the mother always pulls them away, tells them not to talk to strangers. But if we don't talk, we're all going to be strangers to each other forever, aren't we? You know, I don't want to be a stranger. It's, it isn't my choice. There's a place on the canal where the street walkers wait for their customers under a road bridge. 
I often stop by, <clears throat> by there, wish them a good night. They don't even answer me now, just wait for me to move on. Suppose somebody like me hanging around is bad for business. Anyway, I move on. I know when I'm not welcome. There's a lock on the canal as well. It's quite a walk from here. It takes me the best part of an hour to get to it. The water gushes out from between the gates, makes a sound like a waterfall. I love that sound. I sit and dangle my legs over the, the edge and I look down at the water and listen to that sound. It's deep, the water in that lock, way over a man's head. Somebody must have drowned there last summer because there were little floral tributes piled up just where I normally sit. Funny coincidence, that. I couldn't resist picking some of the flowers and tearing the petals off and dropping them one by one into the water. It was a disgraceful thing to do, really, like some young thug with an aspel. The petals just stayed there in the water, exactly where they landed. I remember a line from an old film, I think it was Woody Allen, before he got all serious and into his angst. He was in a boat, Woody with another man, and it, the boat was about to sink. And then the man asks Woody if he can swim, and Woody says, I don't know, I never tried. <laughs> I never tried either. If it turns out that I can't, would you drop some petals into the water for me too? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay, congratulations.